don't think we've met. I'm Clementine. Yeah, I know. Your kid won't stop talking about you. Uh, um. Hello, Clementine. I'm Violet. Nice to meet you. What he said. You know, you're not half bad, considering the circumstances and all. <sighs> Thanks. I'd call that a B-plus performance there, Vi. You've done better. Fuck off. B-minus, then. Now, Clem here. That was a solid A. A-plus, even. Don't be jealous, Vi. Be better. Um, you kicked ass, Violet. A plus. I know. You're both delusional. Thank you. I shouldn't have even brought it up. It's not a good memory. Guess I just lost my train of thought. Most of us that are still around, a lot of times we have more bad memories than good. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Honestly, I just miss having someone around to talk to. There's just so many dudes. This place can get a little too bro town for my liking sometimes. And I'm not exactly like a people person. You know, I know I sometimes have a habit, have a habit of being a little bit too harsh. You come off all right. I thought you were pretty cool. Um, oh, thanks, I guess. You were pretty cool too, not there against those walkers. Hey, um, sorry if I was weird last night about the whole room thing. Seeing someone else in there, uh, it was harder than I expected. You'd think I'd be less sentimental by now. <clears throat> uh, Don't sweat it. I'm glad we got to know each other. <laughs> yeah, I guess I am too. I just, I feel guilty about the whole thing. Why? I was supposed to be out with the twins that day. I wanted to work in the greenhouse, so I asked Brody to cover for me. But then, I didn't even get to say goodbye. I, I wanted to talk to Brody, to tell her I didn't blame her for what happened, but every time I tried, I was reminded of who we lost. It was easier to just not talk about it. Where are those guys? Practicing making out with a toothless walker. Gross. I know. Poor walker. <laughs> <laughs> you have to believe me! I don't know you, Clem. Not really. I'm sorry. I guess you never will. This isn't like you. I know you're not weak. I know you know bullshit. You can smell it a mile away. And you're telling me you buy his story? Violet being difficult. Why am I not surprised? Put down the gun now. We're gonna do this the right way. Back off, all of you! Take AJ, go inside. Come on, let's go. Thanks for trying to keep us. You're welcome. I wish you could stay. I didn't want this. Run! When I heard you call for help, I didn't even think. I wanted to help you, but when you told us to run, I had to trust you. Thank you for protecting us. It was really brave. I really thought you were dead, Clem. It's just everything is so fucked right now, you know? It's really good to see you again. It's good to see you too. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Sometimes I need the quiet just to get away for a while. Clem. Yeah? I know you came back for medicine, for AJ, but after that, you could have just left. Avoided all the bullshit with the raiders. Why didn't you? Sorry, I know that puts you on the spot. 
You don't have to answer. Why would I go anywhere else if you're here? I'm glad. Right. Now it needs a personality. Bright, pretty, good with other people, always moving, tons of energy. Sounds like anyone we know. The energy one is easy. Good with people, not so much. Yeah, that sounds like you. <laughs> Weren't you listening? I said good with other people. Well, maybe not that part. <laughs> I'll try to take the rest as a compliment. Awesome. Mm, this one's easy. Smart, clean, vicious, dependable. Someone you want with you in a fight. Doesn't take crap from anyone. Gets shit done. Sounds just like you. Uh, I like that one. Yeah. A bird is free. It could go anywhere it wanted to. Up and up and up and never come back. Go south, east, west, doesn't matter. You could fly straight into a sunset and see where it ends. You wish it was you, don't you? Sometimes, when it all feels so heavy down here, I can't help but wonder what it would be like to be weightless. It's just, I've watched people leave before. Family, friends, they never come back. But you did, and now I can't imagine what it would be like if you weren't here. Um... That sounds so much dumber when I say it out loud. <sighs> you know what I mean. Uh, I think... I mean, I hope... We're more than friends. And... I want... <sighs> Holy shit. <sighs> That's romantic. I mean, holy shit. They finally show up? Yeah. Stay safe, okay? you this <gasps> stars so you never forget that night I never will when you told me you had feelings for me I was shocked then I started thinking there's something I've always wanted to try with someone I cared about, and I never have. What is it? Have you ever danced with anyone before? <laughs> nope. Do you... wanna? Just us. No one else around. I mean, I know it's kinda weird, but it's... something I've always wanted to try. <sighs> I don't know how to dance. Will you show me? Sure. We'll make it up as we go. Thanks for the dance. Yeah, we're getting better at being romantic. <laughs> yeah. I could tell you why I was sent here instead. You know, as a consolation prize or whatever. You might hate me after, but since we're all being so open and all, I was hoping you'd tell me. I spent a lot of time at my grandma's house growing up. What with my dad being a drunk and my mom working three jobs. 
But after my grandpa died, grandma just kind of shut down. Spent all day and night rocking in her little chair in the den. I'd sit there at her feet as we both watched TV. Mostly cartoons, since she never seemed to care. Sometimes I could hear her crying, but I didn't look back. I just feel really weird and turn up the volume, you know? Anyway, one day she left the den and came back with another chair and a 22 rifle. Set the rifle butt on the top of the chair, holding the barrel back to her chest. So, you know, she had trouble reaching the trigger this way, but she must have known it would happen because she took out this really tacky wooden back scratcher the real long kind with the one end shaped like a hand, and uh, use that to push the trigger in. So yeah, bang, right? Her body folded up and just kept rocking. My mom came to get me five hours later. I hadn't moved. She asked why I didn't call the police or an ambulance or anything. I just shrugged and told her it wasn't like grandma was going anywhere. And besides, I just wanted to finish my cartoons. She shipped me off to Erickson the next day. I was 11. So sorry, Violet. I can't imagine what that was like, what you went through. It's fine. We've just been through a lot of shit. We weren't good people, Clementine. But it still doesn't mean that we should have been left here to die by the people that were supposed to take care of us. if someone else gets caught while we're in there. What if it's you? I couldn't save Minnie or Lou or a Sim. Omar. I, I... I really care about you, Clem. If something happened to you because of me, I can't lose you too. 
I won't. You better not disappear on me, okay? I promise. <laughs> what are you doing? Go look in another direction. Are you okay? Yeah, my ass is a little singed, but I'm good. You, I was, I was so afraid you. Me too, but we're okay. We're both okay. I'll stay back and cover you. I'll be right behind you. The second I see an opening, I'll make a break for it. I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Damn right. I couldn't believe you were really dead. I had to try and find you. You did find me. Well, we were looking for you guys, and I... I thought you might be gone for good. Oh. Shit. I was trying to figure out what I'd do if you were gone. And I realized how goddamn stupid I was about Minnie for a whole fucking year. I was so wrapped up in losing her and Sophie, I pushed away everyone who tried to care about me. Marlon, Brody, Lewis, even you and AJ, I, I, I tried my damnedest not to care about either of you. And I still couldn't tell you why. Well, you screwed up. Because you did care about me. Yeah, I did. Way more than I meant to. I'm still kind of amazed we found each other, you know? Yeah, me too. Jesus, everything's so different now. Me, us, the school. I remember how Marlon described it what we were going to turn Erickson into. It's not the way any of us pictured it. How did you picture it? I guess I couldn't. I just listened to what Marlon said. How it would be a home. A real one, but I couldn't really wrap my head around it. My family lived in a trailer. What about you? Where'd you live? I lived in a house with my mom and dad. Fence around it, big backyard. What was your favorite part of the house? I had a tree house in the backyard. I used to take my walkie-talkie up there and play for hours. I'd pretend it was a ship and I was the pirate captain. Or it was an igloo and I was a hunter. <laughs> or a castle and I was a princess. Really? Like with frilly dresses and a tiara? Yeah, but also a sword. A warrior princess. Yeah, obviously. And the treehouse kept me alive when all this started. It's where I hid. <sighs> you know... Erickson can still be the home Marlin promised. As soon as we get back, we'll start rebuilding. Hmm. It'll be a lot of work, but you're right. It is worth it. Hell, we could even put in a treehouse. We've already got a bell tower. Okay, we'll build a bell tower house. Perfect. After all that's happened, it's still hard to imagine. 
I mean, we fought for it, defended it. It should feel more like home than ever, but it doesn't. You know what the problem is? That stupid fucking name, Erickson. You want to rename it? <laughs> yeah, fuck that guy. We should name it something cool. Threatening, but not like scary. Something that makes assholes go, I should stay away. But not like blood murder knife house. What about the rotting shithole? <laughs> it's accurate and uh, <laughs> kind of cool. Like a rock band. I'm in. I want to help rebuild our school. You will, Ten. We all will. We can start as soon as we get back. Let's get home to the rotting shithole. This is the part where you tell me you'll be really, really careful. <laughs>